I'm sure we all have kind of our own style though, or technique. What do you guys usually do when you get to a place to go birding? Well, I was going to say for me, my style of birding as of right now, same thing, like limited time, uh, got to, you know, have a young kid, another kid on the way, very pregnant wife. Um, you know, so anytime that I'm shooting out right now, it's more of like a, either like a quick destination or like I'm there for a specific bird because something rare like showed up. Right. So, so when I'm getting out of the car, the, I think almost regardless of what type of birding you're doing, it's the, you know, car off door shut, like you have all your stuff and it's looking and listening, like just kind of taking in what the scene currently is at whatever that area is. So again, either sometimes that's listening to bird activity. Sometimes it's literally looking for a group that might be on the bird that you might be looking for that type of thing. So just trying to take in that scenario and that like, um, situational awareness of like where the high probabilities are. So let's say I go there and there's no one else there. My first thing is going to be like, all right, well, I know I'm looking for this particular bird. It likes these particular habitats. Where are those habitats in this area that I'm at? And let me go to the, you know, the points of, you know, maximal impact, you know, first, and then start weaving my way like through that, that area. So that's like at least, you know, feet on the ground, kind of the first thoughts, first approaches, and that's kind of how I go. And then there's, you know, minutia past there, but I'll let everyone else go. Yeah. I was, I was just going to say, usually when I'm birding, it's, I, I think just to over, I, I guess over generalize, but for um, the sake of trying to break it down, it's either target birding it's, you know, trying to find whatever, you know, just trying to find whatever you can at a certain site or like you're stationary at a hawk watcher or a sea watch or something. So for target birding, obviously, you know, you're going in to look for a certain species. So you have to know certain things about that species. Where does it like? What are its habits? What is it most likely to be doing? And if it's like a target chase or something like that, you know, you're chasing an existing rarity. What birds has it been hanging out with? How has it been seen? What time of day has it been seen? So all these things, you know, let's say I'll give an example here. So um, I'll say little gull. Little gull is a highly sought after species in um, a highly sought after, sought after species in New Jersey and honestly in general throughout the country. It's a really cool looking bird. It's actually the world's smallest gull and it's kind of tiny, got a light silvery back, white color, black hood. And when it lifts its wings, it's all dark under the wings. So it's got these dark underwings. That's what you're looking for. So boom, right away, you know, you're looking for that field mark. So you go out there. A lot of the little gulls in New Jersey are with Bonaparte skulls flocks. So Bonaparte skulls are a similar gull. So you go out there, you okay, oh, I'm looking for a Bonaparte skull flock, but I'm looking for the bird with the black underwings. So also uh, with the place that they usually show up, Raritan Bay Waterfront Park, you're looking at tides as well, because there's a little sandbar where they will come into and they will fly into there. So that that's where time of day comes in. And you're looking at the tides, you're looking at what time is low tide, when the falling tide is, watching the gulls in coming to roost, that's when you're most likely to find it. So that's how I feel about target birding. But um, with just, you know, trying to bird at a location and find whatever you can, it's all about getting there and just following your eyes and ears wherever you are seeing the birds. And that comes with a little bit of knowledge of knowing where to look for stuff. You know, if you have this like homogenous woodland, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but you're looking to come upon pockets of birds pretty much and, you know, sifting through them, figuring them out. But it's about finding where the birds are and, you know, just kind of meticulously going through each one and just, you know, trusting your eyes and ears to lead you to where these birds are. And then I would say for stationary stuff, you know, like sea watching or hawk watching, you want to get up there and, you know, start looking around. The key is finding a flight line and finding a flight line of all where these birds are moving and how they're moving because flight lines will often be very, very similar on the same days. So yeah, that'll, you know, like if you're sea watching, some days the birds will be super far out. Some days they'll be really close. So, you know, you kind of get a feel of what you need to look for, how close or how far out, what's moving and the time of year, you know, scoters will move more towards, uh, scoters are these big dark ducks and they're really cool looking, but scoters will move towards like Halloween and then later on in December, you'll get stuff like alcids, which are razor bills, which are, um, they can fly, but uh, I like to think there are little mini uh, North American penguins. So they're pretty fun. And, you know, if you're looking for razor bills, maybe you'll find a dove key in there, a little tiny little flying Nerf football that's flying too fast for its small brain. <laughs> but they're a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, that's, uh, I guess that would be the breakdown of what I think are those three types of birding between the target birding, the uh, you know, trying to figure out an area, find those birds and, uh, 
and just the uh, and then sea watching or hawk watching and stationary birding. I feel like I'm I'm always target birding to some extent. Um, no matter where I go or when I go, I I before I like it's, uh, as I'm driving to the destination, I always put together a list of likely birds to see at the time of year I'm going out or the location I'm going to. And I start to think about, all right, I have a better chance today of seeing this, 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 and this. And I just, I don't know if it's target birding or it's just a preparedness that I'm coming up with. Um, but it, I, I don't think I could ever, like, you know, I know Rob mentioned it before. You're like, you're always birding when you're outside. I don't know how you worded it, but even when I'm, you know, it's, it's July and July stinks in New Jersey, you know, there's nothing here. And I go to the beach at my kids at, the, at my lake here and I'm looking like, Oh, I could get a Kingfisher. I could get a Kingbird. I could, you know, uh, you know, it's probably going to be a cormorant or something. I'm always like thinking about what I'm going to see before I see it. Uh, I don't know if that's target birding kind of, but uh, I think I'm, even, even like, you know, I've gone to Arizona and Texas for birding and, you know, I studied, I studied my rear end off just going down there and knowing what I was going to see. But even, even with my eBird studies and even like I'm going to this place, I should expect to see these. It's like, I'm always, I mean, I, I don't remember the last time I've gone out now where I'm just like, I'm just going to walk around and see what I see. You know, I, I don't think I, I don't think I do that anymore at all, actually. That's, I mean, it's funny that you say that because I, I feel like that's my favorite type of birding and it's frustrating for me because I'm doing almost none of it right now. And it's, again, it's that time thing. So, you know, some of us are at that stage where you've got your family, you've got work, you've got other stuff that you're involved with. And like, I don't have the time that I used to, let's say when I was in college, I would just go to some place and walk around for two hours and just see whatever I could see. I love finding the bird, right? I like to be the one that actually is like, I don't know what's there and I'm going to be surprised and maybe I don't get anything great, but maybe I do. And it's like, you know, that thrill of seeing what there is to see is I think one of the things I love the most. So it's, it's frustrating to me because I feel like nowadays I'm doing nothing but target birding. Like, Oh, somebody saw this. I could just go there real quick for 15 minutes and I could see it. And I, I don't really like that that much, but it's the only thing I can afford right now. Um, so, you know, I think we all probably have our own preferences. That's, that's definitely mine is I, I prefer to be the one that like just wander around. And I, I think it's also because I like other aspects of ecology as well. So I, if I get bored with the birds, I'm plenty happy to look at some sort of other animals or plants that I'm seeing along the way. And, um, you know, I don't get bored because there's all those other things to see, but, uh, yeah, I wish I could do more of that right now. Oh, I, I have good luck target birding, but it's honestly pretty stressful because high pressure, you know, you're going there, you know, am I going to see what I want? Like, is it going to be a win or a failure? And, you know, it's um, kind of up in the air, just completely fate dependent on what's going on. I'd say probably my favorite is, um, you know, going around to an area to like a new place, going exploring and, you know, trusting, you know, just following your eyes and ears, figure out where the birds are, you know, figure stuff out. Sometimes, especially in a new place, eventually you'll find something that surprised you like, oh, I didn't know that was supposed to be there. That's really fun. And, you know, that's where I think that's the style of birding where I have the most fun and I'm most happily surprised, you know, in the way of our Christmas bird count where we're going around and trying to look and find stuff. We're finding the birds that are there and it makes stuff that's usually common, like an Eastern Phoebe or maybe an Osprey like we just had makes that that much cooler, you know, whereas we might not bat an eye in the summer when ospreys are supposed to be around. But yeah, that, uh, that osprey showing up was really, really special for that Christmas bird count. Was that the second circle record ever in history? Yeah. And I think it, it, it depends like, you know, how would you rank them or how, how would you you know think of them? Like it's, it's a hard question. Cause it's like, well, what are we talking about? Are we talking about like the highlights or are we talking about like the averages? Cause you know, the general like wandering birding, the average is honestly kind of like eh most of the time, but you get that rare occasion where all of a sudden like you are the first one to find something rare and get like the call out. Like that's a huge, huge, awesome feeling even more. So I think sometimes then knowing that a target is there and then, you know, like it's a life or something like, yes, you need it. Yes. You know, but like it's, you got the cheat code. Like you, you, someone already saw it, you know exactly where it's at and it just happens to be there versus like stumbling upon something and, being able to get the word out to everyone like that's that's huge and sea watching in general i think i just like um 
because I, I don't live by an ocean. So it's like a, it's always like a fun thing for, for me to do. But those are my thoughts on it. 